a lovely day. I think I'll do some farming. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? Why, I'm your king. Since when? My grandfather farmed this land? My grandfather before him? My grandfather before him? Since I built that castle. Huh? What? By the way, you owe me rent. I do? For what? So something bad doesn't happen to you. But nothing bad ever happens around here. Miss your rent and it will. <laughs> Hey everybody, I uh, hope you like my new intro, uh, I've launched a Kickstarter and, uh, and I hope you'll check it out, it's uh, for an RPG Orc Skull, there's a video on the Kickstarter page that explains it, but uh, that's what that, uh, that introduction is about, so I've got quite a few of the rules written already, they're not finalized and I have to do a lot of the art and stuff, but I hope you'll check it out and consider backing it. It should be a good game. But this video is about the problem, as I see it, with kings and royalty as presented in fantasy games. Now, the thing about the, thing about the kings and the way they're portrayed in fantasy is there's a very idealized sort of a way that they're shown. And uh, I, I'm not an expert on, say... Middle Ages and the uh, the the you know the history of the Middle Ages. There are people that know a lot more than me, but I would like to I would like to say I've read quite a bit about the Middle Ages, and this is just some of the these are just some of the books that I've read, and uh, and I know the Middle Ages they cover they cover a big. A big swath of land. Oh, there go my books. A big swath, not of land, a big swath of time. So it's kind of unfair to push them all together. You know, you have you have the uh, the Dark Ages after the Romans left, uh, which, by the way, is going to be the setting for my game. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but also you have you know later different periods and things really changed a lot during that time. But one thing. One thing that never really changed, and now, now just just before I before I go get into it, I'm going to back up to sort of what motivated me to to talk about this. And the thing is, is I was running a game a while ago, and uh, <laughs> cartoons. I was running a game a little while ago, and uh, one of my players commented to me about my game and he said everybody everybody in your game is a jerk <laughs> well the thing is is I like to have historical context to my game and the reason I like to have historical context is it's in in my opinion if we if we mythologize the past too much if we don't have enough if we don't have an under, a good enough like a you know, some realism about what the past was like, like we can end up fooling ourselves into believing things that just simply aren't true. And I've always been like that. And I just like, I just like a certain amount. Not, it doesn't have to be really realistic. We don't have to go all harn or anything. But I do like it to be, you know, somewhat realistic. And so during like the early Middle Ages, for example, the leading cause of death was falling from drunkenness. Well, that means everybody's wandering around drunk. I mean, there are happy drunks, I suppose, but by and large, that's that's not really that's not really a great scenario. And the reason that they did that is because uh, you couldn't drink the water, so they had to create a a quick kind of alcohol that would sterilize the water. It was worth your life to try and drink the water. Now I know people don't want to to you know play in a really gritty, horrible kind of like oh world, but in my opinion, the problem with fantasy is it's kind of into, it's kind of taken the Middle Ages and kind of uh, along with uh, it's kind of. Uh, sterilized it 
of what it was really like. And people tend to think, you know, that the Middle Ages was sort of like, uh, I don't know, some some kind of like uh, ancient New York or something or Vancouver. And and it really wasn't. It was it was a lot different. And I and I and I have a lot of fun putting that into my game. So one of the aspects I have that I have the most trouble with is kings because I see that kings are portrayed everywhere in the media in my opinion completely incorrectly. And I see it in in D&D as well and I see it in all fantasy games. I see it in animes. I see it in in uh uh, books that I've read, fantasy books. And so you really get the impression that there were things like noble kings. No, there weren't. They were all awful. All of them. There were some that were less horrible than others, but they weren't a lot less horrible. They were all pretty horrible. They were all completely self-interested. They didn't regard other people as even human. They, they considered themselves to have a divine... Uh, right to rule. Whatever they said was basically law, and they were primarily concerned with gaining more power, gaining more land, leaving a legacy, leaving an heir. They were not interested in regular people. They, like I said, they didn't consider them, they, they considered them chattel, basically. Uh, and so, we get the impression, even even when you go into a history book and you read you read a history book about uh, the kings and stuff, you get the impression that they were actually, you know, sort of nice people. But that's because they're writing the history. It's the monks they've hired writing the history. That's what's getting handed down. But if you re read between the lines, you suddenly realize that some of these kings that were considered, you know, good, would gather together entourages and travel around the country and when they visited a town they would literally take all the food eat it and leave and everybody would starve to death but nobody i mean they didn't care because that's you know people were just part of the land they were just sort of an inconvenience they were in the way and that was a king and uh and so they were they you know and, and people fought for the king and for king and country and all of and all of that garbage uh, well, that was propaganda. And basically, if you didn't rally behind the king, then you were going to get a sword through you. You had to fight. They would, they would force fights. They would force soldiers, conscripts, just people from villages. You would stand out there. You, you, would, you would have to soil yourself. You weren't, allowed to, you weren't allowed to relieve yourself on the battlefield. If you, if you tried, you would be killed. They would force you to, they would force you to fight. Uh, and and what you were fighting for was almost never uh, worth it for the person actually fighting uh, the the regular people. You know, it's a th it's a thing. <laughs> I know I'm going to be annoying some people, but please, if you disagree with me, read some books and see what I'm talking about. Or try this one. This is a great this is a great book. And then and then tell you see if see if it isn't a disservice. To, to, you know, like, see it, see how you think about Disney films always portraying the old nice king. The old nice king, he was a complete and utter narcissist in the extreme. There might have been the odd one that was kind of okay, kind of nice. But they, even then, they were just, they were just terrible. Uh, and then the knights themselves were a whole nother, were a whole nother thing. Uh. They would go around, say, after a battlefield. They didn't kill each other. Chivalry was being honorable and, and everything. And, well, chivalry was about horse riding, but then later on it became about, you know, how you, address, how you dealt with uh, other people of the elite class. And so they would, they would try not to kill other knights and nobles. They would try instead to capture them and then ransom them off. But do you know what they did to the regular people that were on the battlefields? Now, you don't see this in Lord of the Rings. You'll never see this in a Disney movie. They would go around and stab them. If you were wounded, you were just stabbed. It, it, there was no point in saving you. you. You were just there to fight. And if you survived, great. If you didn't, oh well. And 
And I'm not talking about, like, they, they would do that with everybody that was wounded. Just wander around, uh, particularly the enemies, but not always. Sometimes their own people. They just couldn't care for them. Uh, these are nice people. These aren't nice people by any standard. Not even the standard of back then. Uh, people, people followed the king. People listened to the king because they were terrified of him. The king said, the, if the king said anything, it, it would happen. Because his word was law. And it was justified because, because they would say that the king ruled by divine justice, or by, by divine right, because they, they maintained that everybody had somebody below them. It was one of the ways that they maintained the class system. So everybody has a boss, even the king. The king, the boss of the king is God. Unfortunately, God seemed to be pretty quiet about whatever the king did. So the king didn't seem to be bothered by having, having a higher master. In some cases, they would, they would have arguments and so forth with the clergy. But the clergy gained a lot of power by supporting the king. And there was a great deal of propaganda. Songs, you know, your bards going around. They would literally sing tales of the king. They would write, you know, the monks could write tales about the kings. And they shone a pretty nice light on them. But like I say, when you read between the lines, they were just absolutely obsessed with gaining more power, keeping the power they had, gaining more money, gaining more power over other people, taking away other people's kingdoms. And the thing about the people, you know, uh, is, that, is that kings, kings sort of arose out of, out of a a system of chiefs, and chiefs very often are elected. So there was sort of a democratic system. Chiefs and so forth would be elected, right? Or a liege lord. Well, a liege lord was sort of like a small king, but, but a liege, uh, 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 a chieftain often would be elected. But then as they got more and more powerful, sometimes they wouldn't want to be, you know, unelected. Or they wouldn't want to give up their power, or they would want their they would want their uh, heir to instead become uh, uh, a king and so pass the power on. So they would start using force and forcing people to behave the way that they wanted, and then starting to group them together. You'd start getting kingdoms, and it would sort of rise up out of horrible people gaining power. So. The reason I, and like I say, the only reason I think that this is an important topic to cover is because I think that otherwise people get the wrong impression about who these people were. Now, we see a king like King Charles, and we think, oh, look, nice old man. He's got all this money. That's interesting. And look, oh, he's concerned about the height of skyscrapers. <clears throat> Well, his ancestors were horrible. I don't know if he is or not. Uh, seems like it, honestly. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I, you know, and, and you might like King Charles in theory, but I would say you've bought into some propaganda. Try reading about them. I doubt he would even consider you worth... I mean, it might pretend, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they, I don't think they consider, I don't think they consider, I think they consider people sort of like a past and annoyance. That's, that's the impression I get. That's the impression I get. And, uh, you know, and a means to an end, more power, more money, that sort of thing. Uh, so anyway, I think the reason that people like to think this way about kings is, first off, people like to be led, by and large, and people want to believe that their leaders are good people. And so it's easy for us, when we're presented with a story about how these are good people, how somebody born with immense wealth, immense power, actually has your, your good intentions in mind. <laughs> somebody who's completely obsessed with themselves, Consider themselves to have a divine right to be on earth. Consider themselves better to, better than everybody else. But somehow this person is really nice. Well, you know, it, it doesn't add up. Especially if you start going into the history. It really doesn't add up. 
And, uh, but I think it's scary. So, for example, we have stories of, like, vampires and all these monsters. And those were actually, those stories actually began because nobility were going around and doing horrible things. So we've heard of Vlad the Impaler. And we all know how bad he was. They were all bad. They were all bad. And so stories would crop up about monsters and horrible things because people couldn't believe that people would be doing this kind of stuff. And it, you know, like starving entire villages to death. Or, or, uh, oh, I don't even want to go into it. It's, you just have to read it. And a lot of it they don't spell out. Like I say, a lot of it you just got to re read between the lines. Or you've got to, instead of relating to the king in the story and thinking about, oh, wow, you know, like he fought this because he wanted this or whatever. Think about the people <laughs> that he was walking across to get these things, to do these things. It's, 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 it wakes you up and it makes you, it makes me, like I, I despise Disney because of it, because the, because of the way they portray royalty, because it's just, it's just absolute propaganda. They are not nice people. And, and honestly, if you want to disagree with me, go right ahead, but please read about it before you do study it so why so getting back to to why everybody in my campaign world was a jerk well first off they were all drunk the leaders were all nasty incredibly ambitious self-centered the knights were the same class i mean they're the same deal except they they're pretty much a lot like uh uh party animals almost you know having uh, going out having good having a good time hacking people up but uh uh in capturing each other you know it was, it was, you know, there's a there's a certain amount of sport to it for the for the uh for the elites for the knights not for the common people and uh I feel like some people are going to get really mad by this. <laughs> Again, it's just my opinion. And please, please read about them. Really study them. I, I highly recommend it. I really highly recommend it. Uh, because it, it's, it's, oh, it's, 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 uh, it's really interesting. And I think that it's, it's a thing that I like to have in my campaign world because when I have players, they kind of go away with a, sort of a different understanding of what kings were. Because as my cartoon showed, that is how kings happen, right? They come and they take over land and they say, this is mine now. There may be a chief or they were something. They announce that they're king now. They have a bigger army and now you're my property. You're now chattel. You have to live on this land and farm it. And I'm going to come and I'm going to take some of it. And if you don't like it, I'll send somebody over to goon you. Uh, that's, just how it, that's just how it worked. And I don't think we're served by pretending that... Uh, that these people are nice. I don't think we are. I, I think it's a better idea to know and to actually portray them as they actually were. Uh, but anyway, that's it for my video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll check out my Kickstarter. I hope you're not too angry with me. <laughs> and uh, But if you are, hey, you know, it's it's just an opinion. If you don't like it, you know. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching and I'll uh, talk to you later. Take care.